Welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden. I am joined here with Travis Rudolph and his attorney, Mark Shiner. Travis, as you know, has been known to our audience as the ex-NFL player charged with murder in Palm Beach County, Florida. And now, just yesterday, after under four hours of deliberation, you were acquitted on all of your charges. So I want to thank you for sitting down, Travis, to talk to me. And thank you, Mark, because I know you're exhausted for sitting down with us also. But Travis, I really want to ask the question that I know is on everyone's mind. Tell us, how was your first night of freedom after two years since this incident? Uh, it's just amazing. Like, really a dream come true. I literally had dreams about this, you know, this day to come. And just to have my freedom, to get to cut off that ankle monitor, everything, it was just a blessing. Yeah, a blessing. And, and you had a lot of support. But I know that you were a very religious person. You said that you were praying a lot while waiting for the verdict. What was going through your mind just before the verdict was read? Uh, just the, just the, the, the part of just not knowing, you know what I'm saying? Because you just, you, your, your life's literally in 12 people's hands and it's just not having control. That's, that's not a good feeling. So just, there's a lot of things going on in my mind. My mind was rushing, my heart was beating literally while I was reading the verdict. I just literally felt like my heart was coming through my chest. Like, it's just a surreal feeling. Yeah. and. Uh once the verdict was read and you heard that first not guilty and then not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, how did you feel then? Uh, it was just a relief. I just felt like thank you to the jurors for just going through the 10 to 14 day process of even hearing the truth. And I, and I really felt like they was engaged and they made the right decision because I I, I clearly acted in self-defense, and I, and I thank them for making the right decision on it. Yeah, and you know, a lot of us here, uh, I had expressed when I was watching this case that I thought that the jury had made the correct verdict. But before I ask you the next question, let me just ask Mark Shiner, who has been sitting with you and guiding you for the last several years. Mark, being a trial lawyer myself and having had sports clients accused of murder and acquitted, it's very difficult to have somebody who's innocent in the palm of your hands trusting you. What was that like? It's a responsibility that, <clears throat> no matter who your client is, as you know, uh, we, we have a, a higher duty to our client to make sure that we represent them to the best of our ability. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're a football player or a janitor of a, of a building. Uh, they're human beings, and if they've been falsely accused, uh, there's nothing more important than making sure the truth comes out and we're satisfied it did come out. Yeah, and I can see that you're still very tired. Uh, the verdict probably has hit you, but uh, the exhaustion of working for a client is a lot. But uh, uh, Travis, I want to get back to you. We do know that there was a death in uh, this self-defense case, and that was Sebastian Jean Jacques. What do you have to say to his family at this point? Um, to the family, is my condolences, but for every action, there's a reaction. And just like my lawyer said yesterday in one of the interviews, that you got to take responsibility for your actions. And I mean, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for the loss. I, I, I'm to this day. I pray on the family. I pray on Sebastian. But like I said, you got to take responsibility. Yeah, I, I, I thank you for. Uh, praying on uh, the loss because uh, we watched you and we know that you are a very sympathetic character and I'm sure this is difficult for you too. Now, for those that have doubted your innocence because as you know, social media is a big thing uh, when there are trials now, what do you have to say to those people, Travis? Um, uh, I don't really have anything to say. Um, you know, the jurors, it got, it got it got handled in court, and um, everybody's entitled to their opinion, so I don't fault anyone for feeling how they feel, because like you say, people see something on the internet or see something from the news and just think it's the truth, but uh, until everything is laid out and the foundation is laid out, you can't make an opinion until everything is over with. And I really want to thank you for telling people that there's two sides to a story and to trust the system 
and to wait till all the evidence is in, as your attorney uh, indicated. Now, the next question I really have, really, uh, I'd like to have your input and Mark's input. Um, you had a beautiful family who testified to you, who testified for you, and obviously there had to be some incredible psychological impact on both you, your mother Linda, and your brother Daryl. Could you tell us about that? Um, just a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of, a lot of crying, a lot of tears. I mean, it's a hard, it's, it's a hard and upsetting feeling. You just knowing that you got accused of something that you didn't cause, you didn't, you didn't start or anything. Like, just the fact that, like I said, just not knowing and just knowing what you're facing up against. Because if I was convicted, I would have been in prison for the rest of my life. Like, so all of us just, just really, it's a really upsetting feeling just knowing that you're faced up against that. And yet you're willing to face that jury. Uh, Mark Shiner, you got to watch Travis. You got to watch his brother Daryl and his mother Linda over this period of time. What did you see the effect on them, the crying, the tears, the emotion? How did you, how did you deal with it to keep them level to be able to present their case in court? Well, <clears throat> this is a young man who has got the utmost character and uh, in terms of honesty of, of who he is and you got to see a little bit on the witness stand. His family's the same. These are, are, are honest people. Uh, these are the kind of people you want as neighbors. Uh, and that's the way I treated them, just like they were my friends. Um, and, and that uh, even though I had a job to do, I told them trust the system. Uh, I've been on both sides. I've been doing this over 30 years. I was a former homicide prosecutor. Uh, some of them didn't believe in the system. Now they do. Uh, I told them the system will work. Um, never walked out of a courtroom where a jury did something I didn't believe uh, that was possible. They don't always agree with me, but in this case, it was clear. Um, it was not a very difficult case in terms of convincing 12 members of our, our, our jury uh, in Palm Beach County that he was not guilty. It was, it was actually pretty easy, and, and I knew it all along. It was just a difficult road, and I, and I convinced this family, just be truthful. Just speak from your heart. Uh, there was no rehearsals and prep in terms of making up stories. Travis had, from day one when I met him in jail, he told me he was not guilty and explained what happened. He knew the facts before I even saw the videos. He, he knew this young man <clears throat> was never really in the car and he pointed guns at him and he tumbled. I couldn't even see that. It took, took months to get the evidence because the police were hiding the ball on videos, on, on the phones, on 911 tapes, basic things. Um, it was a very difficult case to put together, but once we got everything, uh, and actually just received a few things a couple of months before trial uh, because miscommunication. They didn't even give us Tyler Robinson's phone. Uh, had many things in there about he made calls and, and gave text messages to different people to come to the area beside the four guys. So there's a lot more to this case that we'll probably never know. But, but his family uh, believed, even though they didn't believe in the system at first, they believed I was telling them the truth and, and that uh, he was going to prevail. And Travis... He had more confidence than I did from day one in us and in the system, and it showed. And Travis, you know, one of the things that stood out was when your side, when you got to present your facts, talked about the death of your dad, uh, who was shot and it was labeled an accident, and the trauma that your family went through, make, making the decision not to continue life support because he... Uh, would have been paralyzed and he had basically no brain function on him. How did that affect how you presented yourself at trial in terms of honoring the value of life? How did your dad's death impact you here? Oh, uh, man, just, just the fact going through that experience, I remember it like it was yesterday. It's just, it's not a good feeling. And then it's just, like I said, the, the part of not knowing, because I remember I was in Tallahassee when I actually got the call that my father had been shot. And I was on a flight, I couldn't sleep. And I was just thinking like, man, is my daddy okay? Is my daddy okay? So like, the value of life is everything to me. So, yeah. Well, you know, the value of life, I think it came through that you didn't take the value of killing anyone uh, cavalierly because of that. 
But let's talk about some of the legal rulings in the case. Now, the judge refused to dismiss, dismiss your case on Florida's stand your ground rule. But the jury accepted clearly, easily, that you were in fear of your life and in fear of your brother's life and your mom's life when he discharged uh, your AR 39 times. What is it about you? Why do you think that it was so clear to the jury that you were telling the truth? Um, I mean, I feel like I, I came from the heart. And like I said, I, I explained it to them in, in valuable details. I was credible about what actually happened that night. And it wasn't, no, I'm just trying to come up with a story to get acquitted or anything. It's just, that's what actually happened. I told the truth. And I feel like the truth will always set you free. The truth will set you free. So let's talk about truth in the legal system. Uh, are there any changes or reforms you would like to see in the legal system based on your personal experience with your case, have, not knowing things for two years and having the uncertainty of having the jury determine your innocence? Um, I mean, I can't speak on behalf of the law enforcement. I just feel like far as far as the lead detectives or whatever position you're in, dealing with a serious case like this, you just got to be held accountable. And don't just take one person's story and feel like it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's always two sides and it's, there's the truth. So it's technically three sides of a story. So until you get all the facts and actually do a thorough investigation, you can't just come to a conclusion on things. So just being held accountable, that's all. I don't have no personal vendetta to the lead homicide detective or anybody that was involved in this case. Because I know, you know, they're, they're doing their job, but you just gotta be held accountable. That's, that's all I'm gonna say on that behalf. Yeah, and Mark, I know you agree with that, but let's talk about some of the witnesses in the case. One of the witnesses, Dominique Jones, uh, was, shall we say, interesting on the stand. And I know you felt that way, Mark, uh, and all, and we all felt that way here, and I use the word interesting in quotes. But uh, Travis, you did have a relationship with her, and I know you seem to honor everybody that you had a relationship with. Is Dominique in your future? No, not at all. We're actually glad to hear that, I think. But uh, now let's talk a little bit uh, about courtroom and what people perceive as courtroom bias, bias in the justice system. There are statistics out there that tell us that when you are black, the chance of winning a self-defense case for murder <coughs> is under 15%. And that's regardless of the victim's race. Now, I'd like to get your input first. Why do you think your case was so different? And then I'll ask Mark for his input. Honestly, I, I don't even have an opinion on that. I don't know. I don't know as far as the statistics or anything like that. But um, I don't know. Like I said, I just feel like it's just clear cut with my case. Uh, I mean, you clearly see what these guys came to what their intentions was when they came to my house. You could see you know, <coughs> basically a hit was set out for my well-being and my, my mother's and my brother's. I mean, it's just clear cut. I mean, that's why I feel like the decision was made how it was made yesterday on my behalf. Yeah, as a matter of fact, one of the things I commented on is when they told your mom to go into the house, Ma, we're not looking for you. We're looking for your son. But, Mark, I'd like to get your input on that because it is something that the legal system has to grapple with. Yeah, I don't, I don't look at cases from a statistical standpoint. Everyone's an individual. Um, if I looked at it, I would think that maybe we're not going to win. So uh, I, I don't think race in this case had anything to do with anything at all. Um, I would hope it wouldn't. Uh, I do agree with you that generally people who are, are not white uh, don't get a same fair trial on a, <clears throat> a self-defense type of case, and I've seen that myself. But in, in this case, that absolutely did not happen. We, we had a fair jury. We knew it going into it. We had probably one of the brightest and smartest group of people that I've ever picked as a jury. Uh, they, they really were all bright people. Um, and I know if Travis didn't win this case and he was convicted, he'll never get a better trial or a fairer jury. 
so I, and race had nothing to do with it in this case, thank God, um, at all. Uh, he was uh, clearly acting in self-defense, and uh, the wrong people were on trial here. It was they should not have had Travis sitting there. They should have had these other characters, including Dominique. Uh, they're responsible for Sebastian's death, uh, but unfortunately. In this county, I don't have any power other than to represent Travis. If I did, I would have charged all the other people for many other crimes that they committed. Yeah, it, it is interesting that you say that because I know there's been a number of commentators on who suggested that the charging decision of not charging uh, Dominique and others uh, should be re-looked at at this point. But you did mention the jurors, Mark, so let me go back to Travis. Travis, the jurors actually, as you put, set you free in under four hours. Have you spoken to any of them? No, I haven't spoken to any of the jurors. Now, they may watch this interview uh, since you haven't. Is there anything that you would like to express to them today for setting you free? Um, just, I really want to thank them for their patience. This was a fairly long trial. And uh, just even going through the process of the jury selection, you know what I'm saying? They had to come back for over three three days, so just to even get picked. And um, just, I really appreciate them for actually taking the time out and listening to the truth, and they were engaged the whole time. So I really appreciate them and thank them for making the right decision. And I'm sure that they appreciate you saying you appreciate them for taking this so seriously and making the decision they did. But, you know, uh, cases happen on social media, and I saw that you finally got to blow off some steam last night. You were putting your, your partying on Instagram, um, you know, thanking everybody. Nice. Um, at this point, were you thinking about making sure that your family saw you blowing off steam, or were you thinking about anything in regard to the victims? And could you tell us what your freedom means to everybody here, both your family and the victims, including uh, the family of uh, Sebastian, oh. Jean Jacques? Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but hold on a second. Yeah. You said what the prosecutor said and made a statement about the victims. He's the victim. His family's the victims. There's no victims named Jean Jacques in this case. He got what he unfortunately deserved legally. And unfortunately, his friends were in charge. So the victim is sitting next to me. And I want to make that clear when the prosecutor made a statement to the public that they respect the jury, but they stole their heart goes out to the victims. Well, they got it wrong, and they still got it wrong. This man's the victim. Very, very interesting, because, Travis, uh, many people felt that you are the victim, and anybody who is wrongfully accused is a victim. And there's still a danger that you could have been wrongfully convicted. So thank you, Mark, for saying that. But did it feel good to blow off some steam last night, Travis, to be free, to show your family you're happy? Yes, man. It was just, it was just a lot of that was held in. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was just waiting. I remember like it was yesterday, even when I was in, you know, the Palm Beach County Jail. Uh, just like, man, when am I ever going to get my freedom back? Like, like I said, the, 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 the not knowing part of things is the most hurtful thing of this whole process. And, uh, you know, just, it's just like, it felt surreal. Like, just, just going through that whole process of leaving the courthouse and they saying that I'm freed and I don't have to worry about the house arrest anymore. It's just, it's just a blessing. So definitely just like, all right, it's time to let it out now. Like, yeah, and also, and also I assume yeah, that was helping your mom and your brother and all who stood behind you uh, so uh, wonderfully, as, as families should. But you know what? You know, you and I talked just before you got on the air here. We're kind of dressed in the same colors. I mean, it's not my New York Jets colors and NFL team, so I don't know what I'm doing here, but we're dressed in this pink and black. So, But I noticed you were shirtless on Instagram. Was that symbolic of the night of the shooting in any way? In any way? Uh, yes, I mean, I had no shirt on during that night of this incident because I was about to go to sleep. So, yeah, it was symbolic, but it was just, I mean, I got out of the, I got out of the suit and tie clothes and I was just like, all right, I'm just going to go spend time with my family. It was one of those moments. Yeah, and uh, uh, obviously we could see the happiness in your face and 
we also picked up this symbolism, as yeah. you said. But you just mentioned, and we just maybe I just mentioned the NFL. Now uh, again, uh, not going to my Jets, but you have some connections in the NFL. Are you going to use that momentum that you now have with the not guilty to try to get back in the game? Um, most definitely, um, definitely going to speak with my agent, and uh, we're going to see what's the next move for me. I'm definitely still trying to get back to the NFL. That's my goals. That's my aspirations. And um, I love the game, so God's willing, I'll be back in. Yeah, and I would note that you're a wide receiver because there were some people during the trial saying, well, you know, you're a football player, therefore you could tackle people and, and get into all sorts of things. A wide receiver, no, 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 no. They don't want to be touched by anybody. I know that. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, uh, let's go back to the trial for a second. And I'm interested in the NFL issue, as you know, because I represented an NFL player in a not guilty verdict for a double homicide, but you felt that you had to carry guns because you were an NFL player. There was like a throwaway line in there in your testimony. What did you mean by that? Um, just the fact, you know, being having that title, uh, you're a professional player, whether you're a football player, basketball player, soccer, tennis, um, you basically, you have a bullseye on you. And um, you just have to be aware about that. You can't be naive to the situation because, you know, there's a lot of people that's not fortunate to be in a situation that you're in and they want to take that from you. So you just got to be prepared and ready to protect yourself if they come down to it. Yeah, it, again, uh, yes, you do have a bullseye on you. Uh, and obviously your case here was, was the self-defense issue. But speaking of the NFL again, uh, during the trial, uh, I believe he's a friend of yours because, you know, you grew up within 45 miles of each other. Lamar Jackson tweeted, and I said, hashtag yeah. free Travis Rudolph. Free Travis Rudolph. Have you spoken to LJ? <coughs> no, I haven't spoken to him or spoken to him yet. But, yeah, that is my guy, man. Me and him, we played against each other in high school. We went back and forth. That's my guy, man, and congrats on it. LJ, I'm going to say thank you for shouting me out, man. That's much love, much, much support. I appreciate you. And from the bottom of my heart, I'm happy for you to get your contract. You deserve everything and more. Yeah, I, I'd love for you to call, but I know you're not going to do But I have to try. Would you, you pick up the phone and call him? Uh, I don't have his number right now, but if I had it, I would have called him. <laughs> I know, I know, and I'm sure he's going to be in contact with you. Uh, but it was a great moment of solidarity for you. I'm sure that you felt that. But uh, what else now, Travis, uh, that you are set free, does the future hold for, hold for you? Do you plan to rebuild your life, and how? Uh, most definitely. Uh, like I said, I'm going to continue to work out, stay ready, so I don't have to get ready. If I do get blessed to get a call, to get a workout for a team, and um, planning on getting my real estate license, I'm really interested in that. I'm also planning on getting into like trucking business. Wow, uh, a lot of uh, great goals, Travis Rudolph. Uh, Mark Shiner, who helped you uh, get to be free to let the jury see what happened the night that you had to defend, according to the jury, uh, yourself, your family, your brother. And I think it's a lesson that people don't have to come to someone's castle at night after midnight. And, uh, you know, the truth will come out if that happens. I want to thank you. Thank you, Travis, so very much for being with us. I want to thank you, Mark, for sharing your client with us and for sharing your presence in the courtroom. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. And uh, All right, you. appreciate it. Thank you for joining me today. That's it here for us at Long Crime. I'm Linda Kenny Budd, and I will see you soon.